With the recent announcement of the Office 365 General Availability, I want to take a little bit of time and talk about Office 365 and Small Business Server 2011 Essentials um, integration, what we can do right now, today, and what we can look forward to in the future. As you know, SBS 2011 Essentials is a great first service solution to provide some key on-premise functionality for small businesses, such as server and client backup, centralization of data store, the ability to access your files and information when you're outside of the organization. And with the extension of Office 365, you can now provide in-cloud collaborative services utilizing Exchange, SharePoint, Link, and other technologies such as the um, Office web apps that allow you to do light editing um, and access your Office documents through a browser. Now we get a lot of questions about how we integrate into Office 365 today and where are we going with this integration in the future. So I want to take a small moment to walk through exactly what we can do right now as of today with Small Business Server 2011 Essentials and Office 365 to provide your small business a integrated feature rich solution or to provide your customers the capability to utilize the best of on-premise solutions and services with the cloud enablement that Office 365 provides. Let's actually walk through a practical example of this. In front of you is the Windows Small Business Server 2011 dashboard where we do all of our centralized administration for our on-premise services, such as user creation, backups of PCs and servers, and so on. Now, if I subscribe to Office 365, what do I do when I create a new user with SPS Essentials and Office 365 today? Well, the first thing I need to do is create a user locally. So I click on my Users tab, and I'm going to select add a user account and this is an easy wizard to allow me to create new users for employees in my organization so we'll create a new user called Jackson Wayne we'll give them an alias of Jackson and an initial password again we try to make uh, the management of users um, effortless in SPS 2011 Essentials. So our level of access is simplified around a standard user or an administrator. In this case, I'm going to choose Jackson as a standard user. Our next screen provides um, Jackson the access to shared folders, whether I want to give Jackson you know, read access, write access, or no access at all. And I can do this on user creation. Also, I can do this post user creation if I want it as well. Our final screen in the default install is what remote web access or external access do I want Jackson to have? Do I want Jackson to be able to access shared folders and files that he has rights to? Whether he can use RDP and um, RDP into client desktops or PCs internal to my organization that of course again that he has rights to and other things such as um, home page links that remote web access provides. So in this case I'm just going to keep this as default and create the account. You can see now the account has been created and I can go and join Jackson's PC to the domain if he's not already on a domain PC. So in that case I have created a user locally but I still have an Office 365 subscription so I want now to ensure that Jackson has access to Office 365 services. So how do I do this um, in my SPS 2011 Essentials environment today? So to do my Office 365 user administration, I'm now going to bring up the Office 365 administration tool and go and create my user in that. So this is the Office 365 web portal that allows me to do my user and subscription based administration. For this example, what we want to do is create a user in Office 365 to match that local user that we just created with SPS 2011 Essentials. To do, do this, we click on the Admin option, Users, and then New User. We'll fill in the relevant details. Uh, will match the alias name for easy user administration and also you can capture additional properties for Office 365 such as office titles, um, phone numbers, addresses and so on. We also have the choice to make this user an administrator of our Office 365 environment. We also have to set the user location. In this case we'll choose United States. Here we assign the license 
for our Office 365 user. Now we're utilizing the P1 plan, which is the Office 365 for Small Business plan, which is going to be the premier plan for most of our SPS 2011 essential customers. Not only can I assign the, the parent license here, but I can also control the way my user accesses Office 365, whether they have access to Link, SharePoint, Exchange, or whether I only want this user to access one, two, or all, all three of those. Now that user is created, I can send the results of that user creation to the administration mailbox, which will include a copy of the temporary password uh, for that user to log on to Office 365 and then to enter a password of their choice in, in most cases to match their SPS 2011 Essentials password so they can utilize that one password and that one alias whether they're accessing both locally or um, in SPS 2011 Essentials or Office 365 in the cloud. Okay, so now my Jackson user has been created and I have a temporary password. I can either provide that temporary password to that user directly or as I said before, uh, we'll actually have a summary of that sent in email to my Office 365 administrator. One thing I want to point out here is domain management under Office 365. Now in SPS 2011 Essentials, you can utilize the Remote Web Access feature to create a personalized domain. So for example, I can purchase a domain such as cohovineyard.com and then utilize remote.cohovineyard.com to access my server externally when I'm out on the road. I can also do that process with Office 365 as well. We have a integrated domain wizard or domain management center within Office 365 that allows me to, um, to utilize a personalized domain name. So for example, when I first create my Office 365 subscri subscription, I'm given the onmicrosoft.com domain. Now I want to utilize Coho Vineyard, so Jackson has an email address as jackson at cohovineyard.com. We have an integrated domain tool that allows me to do this in Office 365. So not only do we have a wizard-driven tool within uh, SPS 2011 Essentials to set, that, set this up for remote web access, we also have the capability within Office 365 to take that purchase domain name and automatically set up your MX records, your extranet records, and any other records that Office 365 requires. So again, we really want to try to make this as effortless as possible for our small business users and our small business partners to set up and configure both SPS 2011 Essentials and Office 365. So hopefully you've seen how easy it is to create that user locally, to also create that user in Office 365. Utilizing the same alias ensures that I can use the same logon name, both locally and also in Office 365. And I just need a little bit of user education to keep their passwords in sync. When I'm changing their passwords locally, let's change that password in the cloud as well. Our domain administration, I have integrated wizard tools within um, SPS Essentials that allows me to utilize a personalized domain name for remote web access. And I have similar set of functionality in Office 365 as well that I can utilize the same personalized domain name um, through my Office 365 uh, email addresses and SharePoint access. So albeit these systems um, you'll need to administer separately, um, the administration model is very, very simplified and there's no reason today that you can't integrate both SPS 2011 Essentials and Office 365 in your environment and utilize these two great products together. So today we also announced that the Office Integration Module, or OIM as we call it, is going to be available in the fall timeline. And this is why I specifically showed how you could use SPS 2011 Essentials today with Office 365 with very little administration overhead. Now the Office Integration Module is just going to automate some of that administration. And make sure you learn more about the Office Integration Module in the second part of this video series.